Welcome to my library. Today I'm taking a look at the most recent Steam Next Fest. Steam Next Fest is a little event that Steam has been holding a couple times a year, where they promote a bunch of indie games, which are encouraged to release demos to show off their game. I downloaded 17 of them, based on recommendations, what Steam promoted and stuff that looked interesting to me. I'm gonna go play them all and i report back uh, what I think about each of them. We'll start off with a cute little puzzle game called A Little to the Left. It's like what Zoomers think OCD is, gamified. It's pretty simple but also kind of relaxing. You just put things in the place they fit. Until you get to this damn drawer. Where do the goddamn paper clips go, huh? Most solutions were pretty obvious, but some just left me scratching my head, wondering what's actually being asked of me. Neo Dash is one of those time trial challenge racing games, visually incredible, and the music bops. Seeing the Monster Cat logo made me very nostalgic. It was all I listened to back when I was 16. The game itself is also pretty good. You can do some Rocket League boost tricks, which is always super fun. Only thing I can deduct points for is it doesn't really feel like I'm going 500 uh, kilometers an hour? Miles an hour? Uh, it doesn't feel like I'm going 500, okay? I want to go 500. Adapt has an obvious inspiration in Spore, specifically the creature phase. But is it a good imitation? Well, it's pretty bad, so yeah. Jokes aside, I loved Spore and seeing a game that's trying to be the best part of Spore got me pretty excited. I feel like this one still needs some time in the oven since it feels pretty empty and slow at the moment. From a Spore-inspired game to a Forager-inspired game. If you've played Forager, you know the addictive gameplay loop that can set in. Gather resources, smelt, construct, research, gather, level up, buy island, repeat. I can already feel that starting when I played Nova Island. But this one adds automation into the mix, which threatens to make it even more addicting. I'll keep an eye on this one and look forward to it ruining my life. Rebots. Man. This one is upsetting. It looked pretty cool, like a full automation game where you control robots to change the climate of an asteroid slash planet so quirky little aliens can live there. Like the poople. Look at it. But I found there was a lack of explanation how anything really works. You get a small tutorial at the start, but that's about it. One of the first quests I got was to find an asteroid with a mountain and bring a number of crafted stuff to the landing site. But I couldn't find a single asteroid that had both the necessary crafting ingredients. So I tried a different quest. This poopal wanted an asteroid with four cliffs. Couldn't find one. Didn't exist. Had me pretty frustrated, so I bounced off pretty quickly. I learned in the player survey afterwards that you can plant stuff, so maybe I'm just dumb. Now, the Wandering Village is really cool. It's actually one of the demos I played for the longest, and I don't even like settlement builders. This one's gimmick is you're building your settlement on the back of a giant lizard. Onbu will eventually start moving, bringing you to new places for your expedition team to scavenge. You can also gain Onbu's trust by feeding it and issue it commands, like moving faster through areas that are too hot for your crops or too arid for your air wells, or rest for longer in the areas that are better for you. It's really nice, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on this one for sure. Soldiers. It's always nerve-wracking to see a new metroidvania hit the scene. Balancing the pacing in between upgrades and backtracking is tough, and a lot of them are too slow for my personal taste. This one is spot on though. Music's great, the pixel art pops and the combat feels really nice. A video game journalist would liken it to Dark Souls. You got a dodge roll, block, parry. But you also get a bunch of tools and from the way it looks there's going to be a lot of cool upgrades down the line. Definitely worth a look. We got winners back to back here folks. Silt is really good. Really atmospheric. You play as a diver with the ability to possess fish swimming around a creepy deep sea cavern. If you like to limbo or inside, you'll love this one for sure. Full version can't come soon enough. 
I really had no patience with Fata Diem, I gotta admit. Controls were clunky and the tutorial character annoyed me right out the gate. It didn't really help that there were NPCs running into the river on the loading screen. I doubt I missed anything here. Now, Turbo Overkill. There's few games that give me as much joy as absurdly fast boomer shooters. That being said, I may have just found my new favorite game. Turbo Overkill goes hard. No bullshit, just go fast, shoot faster. This game doesn't know the meaning of chill, everything feels so goddamn good it's hard to really put into words. Instead of a melee attack, it gives you a chainsaw slide. Because one of your legs is a chainsaw leg. A cheg. The faster you go, the more damage you do. And there's upgrades so you can make your cheg recover armor. This is already brilliant and I cannot wait to play more. This is the type of game that's going to be incredibly fun on Nightmare Difficulty. You see Annapurna Interactive, you know it's good. Neon White is a puzzle speed platform shooter thing. It plays really nice and I like that the weapons you pick up are also your movement abilities. So you gotta get to the end of the level as fast as possible while killing all the enemies. The smarter you use your weapons, the faster you go. It's pretty nice. The story is kinda intriguing too. The characters seem fun in a like intentionally annoying way. Got up to some crazy stuff. You are my sass game, man. The darkness to my light. Met this other neon earlier who was a total simp. And it has this like persona-ish dating sim, give gifts and spend time to progress relationship thing. And honestly, that just improves every game. Let's be real. I don't think I need to point out what Coromon is inspired by. It's... it's fine. The music's good, the battle sprites are actually really nice. The designs are somewhat interesting, but it, it really feels like when... You know when you program and you copy code from Stack Overflow and only change the variable names? Like Tackle is Slam, Bite is Chomp, Dark type is Foul type. It's especially bad timing after Pokemon just released a new game that's being praised for finally changing up the same tired old formula to release a game that's using the same tired old formula. I don't know. It's fine. It's just... If I want to play a Pokemon game, I'll just play, you know, I'll just play a Pokemon game. And if I want a different experience, but still Pokemon, I'll play a ROM hack or something. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see who this is for, to be honest. Now, Tinykin is how to make your game distinct from the one it's inspired by. In comparison to Pikmin, Tinykin is way more focused on the platforming. The level in the demo is huge and it was honestly a blast to explore every nook and cranny because in every nook and cranny there was more stuff to find. A delightful collectathon with tons of creativity to how the level opens up to you. It's fantastic stuff. Unliving is pretty cool. A necromancer roguelite. Really neat stuff. Looks like there's going to be tons of stuff to unlock. The feeling of rolling over enemies with a horde of zombies is always going to be fun. Although in this one, it doesn't always feel like the zombies are doing that much. Like most of them are just standing around when, you're, when they're supposed to be attacking. But I'm sure that will be tweaked by release. Not an instant buy, but definitely a watch. Scathe feels weird, man. It doesn't feel as responsive as Turbo Overkill did. And it just tries really hard to be edgy. You get a dedicated wipe blood off your face button and the demo starts over when you die so i don't really feel like going much further after a sparkling pot turned out to be an explosive and not loot with war stride challenges i'm noticing a theme but this one is all about going fast like neon white was go fast get records controls feel good but i also got stuck on geometry multiple times so maybe i'm full of it i've played enough of this kind of game though but you'll know if you like it Ah, and it's nice to end on a positive. Little Orpheus is a charming side-scrolling adventure game taking place in the center of the earth where, as we all learned from Ice Age 3, dinosaurs still exist. Some of the controls still feel a bit clunky, but everything else is incredibly nice. Especially the narration really sets the mood for a wholesome and sometimes dangerously based ride.
the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, now you are an expert on dinosaurs. Oh, hardly an expert, General. Just educated by the best schools in the world, like all good socialists. Alright, that's my demo journey for this next fest. Here are the games I've wishlisted. And uh, do go wishlist the ones you enjoy. From what I know, it actually really helps the developers. Since it tells Steam what people are interested in, so they promote it more and stuff. I've been meaning to make something like this for the last few next fests, but always got distracted. That's it. Subscribe if you don't want to miss my next upload in a year. <laughs> and let me know which demos you've tried. And if they're good, see ya.